Um, so, sorry, I'm in a kind of, <laughs> I'm in the newsroom at my school. Um, can you tell me your first and last name, uh, your age, and where you're from? My name is Lily Goodman. I'm from Richmond, Virginia, and I'm 13 years old. Okay. And um, tell me a little bit about maybe some of your hobbies or things you're interested in, things you do um, you know, at school. Are you part of any clubs or organizations? I am part of 8th Notes. It's a group that's a choir just for 8th grade. I'm also part of the regular choir. I play the harp. I do cheering, but that's just like a this year thing. I used to do a lot of ballet. I really like dancing. Um, yeah, that's basically it. <laughs> I love singing too. That's I love singing. Okay, that's cool. So you try to, you know, do a lot of different things at school, and you have a lot of hobbies. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Um, so you started your career when you were three. Was it three or two? It was yeah, in between three and two. Okay. Um, can you tell me about how? Like, obviously, you were too young to remember, but how did your mom um, get you into modeling, and what were some of the first jobs that you did when you began? I know my first job was for um, the Goddard School. I don't know if you heard of it. It's a preschool, like, kindergarten, and it's in, I know it's in Virginia, but um, I don't know if they have it anywhere else. But, yeah, that was my first one, and I was the little... I was uh, like a hula dancer. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, and um, honestly, I really don't know how I got into it. I haven't really talked about that with my mom, but mm -hmm. I know she knew Stacy at Monologic Wilhelmina in Richmond, Virginia, and so I guess it started out some way. Okay, so she probably just knew the lady and um, I actually spoke to her about it and she said that your aunt was kind of interested in yeah. um, getting you into it so okay um, so throughout your career you've done all different types of um, you know shoots um, you've done commercials as well what are some of the recent projects that you've worked on um, I worked on the blue campaign for Homeland Security and that was that was a great opportunity I got to be on set with ho real representatives from Homeland Security, and they talked to me about what happens, like behind the scenes with human trafficking, and it's just like really impacting. Mm -hmm. It's just you know like what the girls go through. It's really sad. Can you tell me a little bit more about that? Um, how it relates to the modeling field? What yeah, you learned? Yeah, well, a lot of models especially child models without chaperones on set are like lured into human trafficking because they don't have their parents around and it's really hard for them to just say no to stuff so mm -hmm. they get lured in really easily and it's sad. Okay. And I know um, you know in every shoot or you know job that you have you have family that's there either your mom or an aunt or someone um, does that make you feel like more comfortable while you're there? Like, do you feel like if they weren't there, you'd be like a little bit more shy, or you wouldn't speak up as much, or you just like, you know, go along with flow, just do what everyone tells you to do? Well, I know that I'm definitely an outgoing person, and I can stick up for myself. But definitely having a sh chaperone or like a parent or somebody on set definitely makes me feel more comfortable, because um, like you just have that security of having a person that's older to say no if you don't feel like it. And so I've never been put in that situation, mm -hmm. but I definitely think I can see where girls would say like yes to things that they wouldn't if a chaperone was around. Okay. Um, and can you talk about how you got involved with um, the Model Alliance? And I don't know if you've met any other models your age through the Model Alliance. Um, who you know are passionate about the same type of subject of protecting kids that are your age that are in the industry. I'm sorry, I couldn't hear you. Okay, uh, I was saying, could you let me know how you got involved with Model Alliance, and maybe if you've met um, other kids that are models that are your age, who may either have similar stories um, about things that they've been through while in the industry. Um, well, I met the Model Alliance through 
Well, I've written this article for the This I Believe. Um, I think it's run through NPR. I'm not quite sure. And it was, we did it with school. And I wrote it about the the art, the ad that I did for Homeland Security. I did it on that on human trafficking and how it relates to modeling. And I my mom got that to Miss Ziff, and it just went like that. And then. Mm -hmm. In June, I did the press conference, and then I went back in October. It was either October or September that I did the other when they they passed the legislation. Okay. And uh, since you've been involved with them, have you met you know other kids that are your age who also model? Maybe um, heard some of their stories, or maybe they've shared you know the same experience as you. They've never been in. I haven't heard, um, well, I haven't met anyone my age, but I have heard stories about the older models when they were around my age or my age, mm -hmm. you know. What kind of stories have they told they you? Or? Just, like how they ha they said yes when they should have said no mm -hmm. and how, like, they had to pose un inappropriately for a child that age. And it's just really sad. Mm-hmm. And you feel like you personally, um, you would always be able to stand up for yourself or to say something if you were ever asked to do something, even if it was, um, you know, artistic or creative or, you know, pushing the boundaries of art, you wouldn't ever, um, you feel strong enough that you would never go that far. Yes, I feel strong enough, but, you know, I haven't been put in that situation, so I can't say, you know, sometimes people that say things, but when it comes to doing what they say they don't mm -hmm. but I believe that I would say no I'm not going to do that mm -hmm. um, and can you tell me about the story that you told me of the girl it was a model you met who uh, she was telling you about how she like dropped out of college or dropped out of high school um, can you tell me about that like what what job was it and um, can you tell yeah, just a little bit more detail about that, sorry. Well, they were doing a photo shoot actually at my house, and I was um, getting photos done here too, and there was a bunch of other models getting photos done. And there was one model, actually she wasn't modeling, but she was, she was doing makeup, and she was telling me when she was doing my makeup how when she was only 16 that she dropped out of high school to pursue a modeling career. And she said that she hasn't gotten that many jobs lately, and so mm -hmm. it's just like a, if you drop out of high school, it's really hard to, you know, get that education back, and modeling isn't always a promising career. Yeah. What did you, what was your reaction when you told, when she told you that? Were you kind of, you know, yeah, how did you? Yeah, I was kind of shocked. I mean, I was like, I would never do that, but I can definitely see how she thought it was hard, because she had, at the time a lot of jobs coming in and a lot of pressure from her agency and there wasn't much support from her parents so I can definitely see how that was hard for her. Okay. Um, I guess one of my last couple questions would be um, in the work that you've done do you feel like there is a lot of pressure for kids your age to um, just go along with the authority um, just to just to do what they say or to, add, or to follow instructions when it comes to, um, you know, doing doing your job? Yeah, I feel like it'd be hard because we're taught at a young age, respect your elders, you know. Mm -hmm. So if there wasn't another chaperone on set that you were comfortable with, then I feel like it could be hard for a kid to say no. Mm -hmm. Have there any been, has there any been any times when... Maybe not you were maybe that you weren't being pressured to do um, you know something more inappropriate or whatever, but um, that you just felt pressure to to obviously you're working pressure to do the right thing or to um, work hard or focus more or anything like that while you were while you are working. Uh, honestly, no, there hasn't been. I definitely think m my mom being on set mm -hmm. it's definitely a big impact on you know them trying to keep everything good for my age range. Okay. So you try to keep things fun and, you know, like they give you, you know, take breaks and things like that. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, 
I believe that's the last of my questions. Um, yeah, that's pretty much it. Thank you for the, the time of, you know, taking the time again to do this with me. Um, yeah, so I'm not sure if I should stop the broadcast now or because it's a recording live. Um, I think I will, though. I'm going to see what happens. If not, I'll email you, um, you know, to, to thank you and everything, but I'm just going to stop the broadcast now. So. Okay, thank you. Bye. All right, no problem. Bye-bye.